at some places it's getting hotter, while it's getting cooler at others. Prices are rising and coffee production is becoming increasingly difficult. How long can we actually enjoy coffee? Will there be coffee in 2050 at all? Let's look into the crystal ball. Hi, my name is Philip and I am a coffee maker. Perhaps you are having coffee right now, like me here, or you've already naturally grabbed a coffee to go today, pressed a button on a vending machine, or you ordered a cappuccino from your favorite barista. How often do you think about how long this will still be possible? That we can simply drink coffee like this? Always? Or never? In any case, it's not a given that we can drink coffee every day. That a product is shipped thousands of kilometers around the earth, only to be roasted, ground and brewed in the end. For me personally, it's a small miracle every time green coffee arrives at our roastery doorstep. So many gears need to work together. Now, we also know that climate is changing and we all contribute to it. We can accelerate climate change, maintain it or even slow it down. In this context, the coffee plant is like the princess and the pea. The coffee plant doesn't like a climate too hot, not too cold, not too wet, not too dry, not too much wind, but no wind at all wouldn't be good either. So the question arises, will there still be coffee in 2050? The short answer is yes, but that doesn't mean we can continue as we are now. I also hope that in the future I can simply press a button, grab a coffee to go from my favorite barista and sometimes enjoy a coffee without much fuss. And here's the long answer to whether we can still drink coffee in 2050. Yes, but from where, from whom, in what form, with what flavor and at what price. Perhaps what's coming next will hurt a bit, but I'm convinced that this pain will only be temporary. Because somehow we all want to drink coffee. And I hope that we're flexible enough to face these challenges. So let's start with question number one. Where does the coffee of the future actually come from? Some places are getting warmer, others cooler, drier or wetter. However, the effects of these changes are always different. 1.5 degrees more or 2.5 degrees more may not sound like a big difference, but it depends on where you are and how directly your livelihood depends on this temperature increase. For some, managing 2 degrees is doable, maybe even positive, but for others, it has dramatic consequences. Coffee is produced in a region that has had a relatively stable weather pattern with little variation between summer and winter. If these variations become stronger, the impact is naturally enormous. We also must consider that coffee is cultivated for 20 to 30 years. The coffee being planted now will grow fully during this time of intensifying climate effects. This urgency highlights the need to already think about proactive adaptation. Climate change cannot be avoided through adaptation. Even if we stop emissions, the change will continue. There are models that show that certain regions will have more coffee, while others will have less. Producers today have to ask themselves, should I adapt my crops now or look for alternatives? In Brazil, where more than 30% of coffee is produced, the conditions for coffee production are unique. Brazil is relatively flat and coffee is grown between 600 to 1200 meters above sea level. It's more like a plateau. Other regions are significantly higher. There is a clear correlation between temperature and elevation. In Brazil, we currently have relatively cool temperatures at lower altitudes, but it's getting warmer. Other coffee regions may have to move to higher elevations and in the long run, Brazil is under pressure. If you look at the recent study of Zurich University, it states that Uruguay, Argentina, California, Portugal technically will have the right climate to grow coffee in the future. But they also say that they only have a rough idea of where coffee will come from in the future. It's time to ask who will be growing coffee in the future. Let's imagine these two scenarios. Scenario number one, you have a large well-functioning farm. There is an agricultural lobby supporting you in marketing coffee. You speak multiple languages, have international networks, you can travel extensively and you have the technical tool to handle many challenges. Scenario number two, you have a small farm and no direct market access. You are unsure about the quality of your coffee, you only speak your native language and you rely on others to sell your coffee. 
you lack technical access to efficient coffee production and follow the advice of pesticide manufacturers. The farm is highly indebted and your bank interest rates are over 20%. Both scenarios exist in the coffee world. However, scenario number two is much more common than scenario number one. Climate change affects everyone, but not everyone can respond equally well. Producers in scenario one have slightly more capacity to act in a timely manner and explore new avenues. Farmers in scenario number two are often subjected to decisions they can hardly influence themselves. In the approximately 60 countries where coffee is produced, none are hardly as well organized as Brazil, apart from Vietnam and Colombia. There is a looming consolidation of countries where coffee will come from in the future. Currently, more than 70% of coffee production comes from five countries only. And this trend will become even more drastic in the future. If you are a small-scale producer today living in a country without a well-developed coffee industry and only obtaining loans at exorbitant interest rates, you probably won't have a future as a coffee producer until 2050. There are new ways of making coffee, and I deliberately use this term making. For example, in the lab, companies like STEM are researching how to reproduce coffee in the laboratory, resulting in powdered raw coffee. Startups like Atomo are working on creating a beverage that tastes like coffee, but it's not made from coffee. Roasted sunflower seeds, for example, are used to provide flavor. These companies claim to address the sustainability problems of the coffee industry, However, it may be overlooked a bit that there is so much more behind a simple cup of coffee and true sustainability encompasses everything, including the people who produce coffee. And the producers who can produce coffee until 2050, will they be able to deliver coffee that tastes the same as it is now? We need to look at two markets separately, the experimental specialty market and the coffee market as a whole. For the specialty world, there will still be really good coffee in 2050. There will also be quite funky coffee as fermentation experiments run wild. What is common today was unthinkable 10 years ago. Let's see what it looks like in 20 years. However, for the overall coffee market, will the taste change? Yes and no. No, if you're looking for a simpler, nutty, chocolatey profile without much complexity, that is likely to become more common. Profiles from warmer regions will likely increase and the processing methods will become more standardized and universal, leading to more uniformity. However, coffee will also undergo flavor changes. Yes, many producers will switch to other cultivars or hybrids. Hybrids are crosses between different varieties that are intended to bring certain characteristics, making the plant more resistant to external influences. It takes time, however, for a hybrid to show stable traits and be accepted from farmers. And during the entire research period for a new hybrid, coffee pests such as La Roya or coffee leaf rust also change. Unfortunately, there are many examples of hybrids that were initially marketed as rust resistant, but became susceptible after a short time due to the fungus mutating. Coffee research is thus engaged in a race against time. Another approach that could be faster than introducing a newly bred hybrid is the creation of a living, healthy soil that can provide optimal nutrition for the plant. Even the best hybrid tree is only as good and strong as the soil from which the plant obtains its nutrients. Breeding is one way to adapt to a new climate, but it is not the only way. It goes hand in hand with a good soil. Will coffee become more expensive in the future? It's a clear yes. And no, the type of coffee that is increasingly mechanized, produced by plants that are becoming more productive on soils that are heavily fertilized and processed by people working in the low wage sector, this coffee will remain cheap. But do we really want this kind of coffee? Production costs, living expenses and wage expectations of pickers are increasing. This has had only sporadic effects on the price so far, but it is growing. There will be regional price mechanisms that attempt to provide a more accurate picture of a realistic purchase price than one could find in a global coffee exchange, which only regulates supply and demand. In that sense, coffee will become more expensive, even though there will continue to be fluctuations both downwards and upwards. But there will be a large segment that become significantly more expensive. 
the segment that understands that nature is not for free. And products that are created in collaboration with nature, or especially not, as that's where humans come into play. If coffee doesn't become more expensive, I would see that critically. Where does the belief actually come from that coffee must remain cheap while we get used to the fact that other products, houses and services are becoming more expensive? When something remains cheap, despite all signs pointing against it, someone is getting too little or voluntarily foregoing margins and not many do that. The true costs in the coffee sector are driven by several factors but are still hardly reflected in the price. The cost for the land, the cost for the credits, the improvement of the soil, the sequestration of CO2 emissions, the fair payment of employees, the excessively high interest rates, the excessively high interest rates. And what if I just want a coffee? Then you wouldn't have watched the video until this point. In essence, it's quite simple. When purchasing coffee from grocers, look for those who not only cater to taste, but also strive to understand coffee holistically. Look for those who can tell you where the coffee comes from, how it was grown, if there is a procurement strategy and how transparent the coffee chain is. Just ask. And if you shop at supermarkets, you can make it easy for yourself. Buy double certified coffee organic and fair trade. That already does a lot of good and nothing worse. So do we have to stop drinking coffee? No, I don't feel like it either. But we still have to drink consciously. So if you cannot skip the cow milk in coffee, then you could use the local organic one. Or perhaps it's worth buying roasted coffee locally instead of from the most remote corners of the world. Like many things, change starts with oneself. So enjoy your coffee further and see you next time.